highlight three points, and I think some of my points will speak to what Richard was just talking about, but three points about um, how the media covers polls and why they matter, especially during election time. But I want to back into it a little bit by telling you about John Harvard. Um, I think most of you here will know who John Harvard uh, was. He just recently died. Um, as I was thinking about what to say today, I was thinking a bit about John Harvard, former MP, um, former Lieutenant Governor, and he was uh, a kind of, for me, a notorious uh, anti-poll guy. Um, when he stepped down as LG, he would send often pretty cranky emails to reporters, often me, um, every time we would do a poll story. And so I, I actually went back and looked in my email as I was thinking about what to say today and looked for one of John Harvard's emails. And it was, we would go back and forth, we'd get in this big email debate. Um, he was a very rigorous mind, a very thoughtful guy, but we would get pretty nasty sometimes on email. And I, I almost thought like, I should just print out this email exchange and like pass it out and call it a day. Because it was a really, it really captured um, this debate over how the media covers polls and how we ought to cover polls. So his th sort of three key beefs with, and I took this from an email that he sent shortly after I did a, just a routine story about Probe's quarterly poll. It was just after the last provincial election, and it was like Tories up slightly, whoop de doo poll, like maybe it was four months after the last, the last provincial election. And so his argument was, first, who cares what, what voters think between elections? Why poll? outside of a campaign period, nobody's locked in their vote, it's, it's totally irrelevant, um, it doesn't illustrate much about sort of the, the mood of voters, why bother? And his, another one of his points was, it reinforces our uh, sense of politics as a horse race, um, that it's only about who's up, who's down, who's stealing, you know, um, uh, support from another party, where, is it women, is it, ma is it male voters who like a particular, it's just all about this horse race and not about policy, it's not about, um, you know, uh, who, who's best to lead, it's not about, you know, larger issues, it's just about this horse race. Um, and his, his other point, and this was my favorite one, is that it, when we report polls as, as journalists, we're making the news. Um, it's, it's us sort of manufacturing the news instead of going out and getting it ourselves. And so those are his three key points. And so I, I hope I'll touch on some of those in a sort of a posthumous rebuttal of uh, John Harvard's views. Um, so the first thing I want to say about why we love polls as reporters, because we do, is it's the only real way we have any hot frickin' clue what voters think. We, I, as a journalist, I, it's my job to cover especially local races. So in the last federal election, I was, we had sort of picked five or six local ridings that we were the most interested in. But we have no idea which way voters are going. We have no idea if they're really cranky about the hijab issue or if they're really in love with Justin or, you know, if the Waverly underpass is really going to be a key issue in Winnipeg South and Winnipeg South Centre. We're guessing. I mean, the only way we could ever figure it out really is to go door knocking. And we just don't have the resources to do that. And we, we cannot trust the spin from any of the parties. We've, as reporters, we've all been burned like numerous times by buying the spin of political parties. I remember in the last uh, provincial election, Bart Kivas and I, who's one of my best friends, we got into a huge argument about whether the Tories might be able to win Transcona, Radisson, and Elmwood. And Bart was hearing from Tory sources that, yeah, they're in play. We might, the Tories might be able to take those like long time NDP ridings. They didn't even come close. The Tories didn't even come close in those ridings. So, and, and I, I mean, I did the same thing in the last federal election where I took a flyer and did a couple of stories about the fact that maybe Stephen Fletcher might have been in trouble. And I just got lucky because I happened to not be totally wrong. But that's just luck. I had no idea. I, I, don't, I don't know what all the voters in that riding are saying because we don't have access to any any real reliable independent information. So we look to polls for at least some hint to at least direct us in some way. So okay, if the if the Liberals are up by a certain amount federally, then then maybe that does put a couple of ridings in play, um, and that helps us direct resources, which is the other reason we rely on polls. We need to. There's not very many of us reporters. We need to know where to go 
um, where, to, where to send our people, where to spend time, where, which events to go to, and where not to bother. And so we rely on some, some semblance of polls to help us just allocate resources in a newsroom. Um, and it's not, it's, I, I actually don't think, to John Harvard's part, point, it's not making the news. It's finding a way to get at the news that's already happening in some, just get some hint of some movement that's already underway out in the public. So if, you know, are, are people really cranky about hijab, the hijab issue? Are they really angry at Stephen Harper? Um, that's already happening. We're just trying to figure it out and try and report on it as best we can. And a poll helps us, just gives us a hint about where to go on a certain story. Um, my second point is the way we've covered polls has improved a lot in my career. Now you'll never see a poll story, even on TV, that doesn't talk about the margin of error, that doesn't talk about the methodology, that doesn't say whether it was, you know, a, a focus group or an IVR, that doesn't uh, say the sample size. In, in the Free Press, we have sort of a template. We run the question, we run the, you know, the little blurb about sample size. We do this for every single poll story as a matter of routine. Um, and that's easy for us to do in print, but TV does it often as well. Um, and I think that's a shift from the time when I started in journalism. The other thing I think we're doing a lot better is we are, we are telling readers that a poll is a snapshot. It's, you know, and it's the trend that matters. Um, every news outlet, in the, including the Free Press, in the last federal election had a poll tracker. You could run your cursor over, and it wasn't the individual polls, and there was a whole schwack of them, that mattered. It was the trend line. And so, and usually when we reported on a new poll, we would say this fits with the trend or it goes against the trend or the trend, you know, the, 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 the sort of space between the Liberals and the NDP are widening. We would give you some sense of where it fit or didn't fit in the trend line. So it's, we no longer, I think, are we saying this poll says the Liberals will win. We don't, we're not that stupid anymore. Um, we're trying to offer readers some sense of trend and kind of perspective on the, the longer term trend of a campaign. Um, I think we're also more skeptical of polls as journalists. That doesn't mean we don't report them, because God knows we love a poll story. Um, and even a, a poll that we might feel a bit dodgy about, we still report. But I think about, and I think this is probably semi-famous in polling circles, but in the Brandon Sewers by-election in 2016, this is my favorite story, um, Forum did, and this was a crazy by-election, it was just a whole, it was a mess of a by-election, it was super fun. But Forum did a poll that came out the night before, um, and I think they used IVR, and it said that the Liberals were going to win Brandon Soares by like 29 points or something. It was totally crazy. And so most of the stories were, there's this poll, but it's totally crazy. That was the gist of nearly every story that was done about this poll. So we gave readers, we just didn't take it as gospel, we took it with a grain of salt, we explained to readers why it might be a bit dodgy, we talked about the whole history of the riding and how this would be a, like a, a shift, shift of sort of epic proportions. Um, so I think we're, we're telling readers when, you know, when we think a poll is an outlier. And actually the Main Street poll is a good example. Um, during the, the civic election, we had a, a huge debate in the newsroom about whether that poll was legit. Because um, it didn't, it was it was an outlier in the last few days of the election. And it was uh, uh, Incitrix. Citri uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, and that's not even a company I even really know, Incitrix. Yeah, it's telephone poll. Yeah. But we, but I mean, we talked about, does it have a reasonably good sample size? Yup. You know, what was it done? Was it weighted? Kind of. Did they go back in the field? Yup. It was, we didn't have, we didn't want to admit it, but it wasn't a bad poll. Um, as much as we didn't want to say that at Free Press because it was a scoop that, you know, CGOB had. And we like to poke holes in everybody else's stories. So, but we, I think we're cognizant now in newsrooms, especially among sort of experienced political reporters, to kind of know a good poll versus a bad poll. Um, and that's, I think, also a shift. Um, the last thing I want to say is that from, just as a journalist, I think, Voters and readers need information. The more information, the better. And a poll is information. It, it, I mean, and there's people that argue that, you know, polls make people vote strategically. Um, you know, they look at the poll and think, oh man, I really don't want the Tories to win or the Liberals. I'm going to vote 
not with my heart, but for the guy I think the poll tells me is most likely to win. Um, I think that's a totally rational decision. And if a poll helps a voter make that kind of decision, that is information they need. Um, and I think it's also, there's great value in having some independent public polling because it, it's, again, it's information voters need and use and want. And more information is always better. That's always sort of my catchphrase as a journalist. More is always better. Uh, yes, I, I think in every newsroom uh, in the last federal election and certainly coming up in the provincial election, there will be a debate over how and whether we can afford riding by riding polls. And we can't. There's a short answer to that. Um, I mean, there's, that was my desperate wish in the last federal election that we could poll um, in, in the five key writings that we started caring about at the beginning of the campaign. And those were not the five writings we cared about on election night. Um, and for example, I would have loved to have known much earlier that my hunch that Jim Carr was going to win Winnipeg South Center uh, by a landslide, essentially. Um, I would have loved to have known that much earlier so that I wouldn't be stuck there on election night because well, it turned out to be super boring. Well, and that my point to interrupt you. You talk to these folks off the record and on background after the fact, and out here, it wasn't even a campaign for Terry Duguid. And some of us made it a lot closer. Totally. It wasn't even close with Carr. It wasn't close in Winnipeg Center. Exactly. That and we're playing this game as media by saying, well, it's close and we're, you know, couching it, blah, blah, blah. It was a landslide. Now, I know it changed during the campaign somewhat, and I get that, but I'm wondering if we're doing a disservice and if in the end, if we're going to serve our audiences, we got to do a way better job at servicing them as opposed to this token coverage that we do. Do you want to get together on a poll? Do you want to share the cost of, you know, of 10 polls in the, in the provincial election? That's the issue, isn't That's it? That's the issue.